Namaste, hum ache hai, kaise hai? And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali, and today we're going to practice and do Tulsi Gubbard's Unifying Keynote Address at Muslims for Peace Conference. Yes. So if you haven't already seen on our homepage, we did Tulsi Gubbard's message for Diwali, her peaceful message of yes. love and um it was beautiful. We loved doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it was a perfect message for Diwali time. And so this is um, the keynote address at the Muslim for Peace conference. And we've done a few things about Muslims. And in our channel, we do try to address everything. But peace is our solution to a lot of this. You know, we really would like peace to be the answer for everything and mm -hmm. I know it's not a perfect world um, I'd like to think it is but I know it's not um, but this is what we've been preaching here everybody living in harmony in unity you know we've just did um, some said guru stuff recently and his message is always so you know live in harmony and you know at one and you know your God is not better than my God and it's just such a nice message and I'm excited to watch this because I feel like she always addresses um in such a such a way like Sadhguru does like very knowledgeable but it's always peaceful right yeah so let's start this up aloha, aloha. namaste Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you and to be with all of you who have come together from different faiths, different spiritual paths, all joining hands to stand in solidarity for freedom awesome. and yeah. peace. Since the beginning of 2017, we've heard of hundreds of tombstones that have been toppled at Jewish cemeteries in Philadelphia and St. Louis and nearly 100 bomb threats have been made against Jewish schools and community centers across the country. In February of last year, ISIS beheaded a senior Hindu priest named Jogeshwar Roy at a temple in northern Bangladesh and injured two others. Just a few months before this, ISIS conducted other attacks on Shia mosques and shrines in Bangladesh, killing and injuring people worshiping there. The perpetrators of these horrific actions have no connection with the spiritual love that lies at the heart of all religions. The love that has the power to overcome right. these differences so and to true. bring people together. No matter where you're from, no matter what religion you practice, your ethnicity, race, or anything else, what is the one thing that binds us all together? It's what we in Hawaii call aloha, a sincere, deep love and respect for other people as children of God. The sectarian spirit that fuels enmity and violence between members of different religions has been described by the great saint Bhaktivinoda Thakur as, quote, the greatest enemy of mankind. When a person thinks, I am a Christian, this other person is a Muslim, and therefore he is my enemy, or I am a Muslim, this other person a Hindu, therefore she is my enemy, this reveals a lack of their own spiritual right. depth yes, and right. understanding. No religion teaches this. Any understanding of any religion that adopts this divisive attitude proves itself false by doing so. As a Vaishnava Hindu, a devotee of Sri Krishna, I recognize and respect both Jesus Christ and the Prophet Muhammad as messengers of God, messengers of love, messengers yeah. of peace and universal brotherhood. The Prophet Muhammad warned against any maltreatment of people of other faiths by saying, Beware, whoever is cruel and hard on a non-Muslim minority, or curtails their rights, or burdens them with more than they can bear, 
or takes anything from them against their free will, I, Prophet Muhammad, will complain against the person on the day of judgment. I was raised in Hawaii in what I call a faith-inclusive family, where I never felt at any point that I had to choose loyalty to the New Testament over the Bhagavad Gita. It really wasn't until my late teens growing up that I was introduced to this ugly concept of sect sectarianism. According to Vaishnava Hinduism, there is only one supreme being, but he has many beautiful and wonderful names. God is one, no matter what we call him, no matter how we worship him. And it is each of our loving exchanges that we have with God that is true spirituality. The Hindu scripture, the Brahma Samhita states, the soul is eternal, and it is for eternity without a beginning, joined to the Supreme Lord by tie of an eternal kinship. The soul is transcendental spiritual potency. When we are tasting this love for God, we are able to see beyond any of our external differences and designations yeah. and recognize that we are all relatives in the deepest sense. By embracing this truth, which is the core message of all scriptures of the world, we can achieve real peace and harmony with others, no matter the different backgrounds that we come from. This tolerance, respect, and love for others, regardless of religion or other differences, is taught by Sri Krishna Chaitanya in this prayer. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, feeling oneself to be lower than the straw in the street, one should be more tolerant than the tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, and ready to offer all respects to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. The Quran states, humanity is but a single brotherhood, so make peace with your brethren. The Sri Shupanishad, a Hindu scripture states, that person who sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord, who sees all living entities as parts and parcels of the Lord, and who sees the Supreme Lord within everything, never hates anyone or any being. The Bible states, anyone who does not love does not know God, so true. because God is love. This is the essence of God. God is love, and central to love is freedom. Here, our country's founding fathers invoked our inalienable God-given right to life and liberty, and enshrined that right of freedom of religion in our US Constitution, recognizing that everyone must be free to follow his or her conscience without fear of persecution. This right is something that comes from God bestowed on every one of us, no matter who we are or where we are from, and which no one has the right or ability to take away. It's wonderful when you think about it that embedded in the very bedrock of our nation is this recognition of free will, this intrinsic right of every one of us as individuals to worship God as one chooses or to not worship at all to adhere to a spiritual path of our choosing or to no spiritual path right. at all. Yeah. No one can make that decision for another person. It is our duty to guard and protect the right of all people to worship or not worship according to their conscience. This is the nature of love, that every person has the freedom to choose to give our heart and give our life to God or not because you can't force someone to love God. You can't force someone to love anyone. As stated in the Quran, to you, be your religion. To me, be mine. By cultivating the understanding that each individual has this intrinsic right to follow a particular spiritual or religious path or no path at all, 
by recognizing that this right is given to us by God, not by man or government, we can maintain a pluralistic, peaceful society. And without this understanding, without this commitment to respect and uphold this right, there can be no foundation for peace in the world. So the terror that we see perpetrated in different parts of the world in the name of God today is in fact a refusal to honor this inherent freedom of all people that is given to us by God. So-called religious terrorism is born from an exclusivist ideology that says my faith is the only legitimate faith and that everyone who's not, who does not believe as I believe is inferior and must be converted, enslaved, or killed. Such acts of terror are also an admission of insecurity and doubt because those who are confident in their own faith have no reason to attack the faith of others. It's only those who are fearful and devoid of love for God who believe that forcing their view on the rest of the world could ever be the will of God. We see groups like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Boko Haram all share this divisive ideology in common. In fact, it's at the heart of this Wahhabi Salafist ideology sponsored and propagated by countries like Saudi Arabia. This exclusivist ideology is the opposite of real religion because it denies the inherent freedom of every individual so to true. choose whether so and true. how they want to love God or not. This is the enemy of peace for all of humanity. To defeat this enemy, these terrorist groups must not only be so defeated true. militarily, we need to defeat them ideologically. Otherwise, those terrorists who are killed on the battlefield will simply be replaced by others who've been indoctrinated into a perverse and violent understanding of religion that is not real religion at all. So how do we defeat this exclusivist ideology? We must confront it. Confront this exclusivist, hateful ideology head to head and defeat it with an inclusive ideology of love, a consciousness of love. Inclusiveness is born of wisdom and love, knowing that every single person is a child of God and we should love others as our brethren. We should appreciate and respect that every individual has the right to choose the spiritual path that they want. Ultimately, the only way we can defeat terrorism is by wielding a superior truth. To defeat terrorism, every imam, priest, reverend, rabbi, guru, and spiritual teacher must articulate this central truth, that real religion is love, and love must be freely given. It cannot be forced. A loving relationship with God can only be initiated out of an individual's free choice. When this truth is heard and understood and accepted in all corners of the globe, then we can have peace. This ideology of inclusivism, of aloha, of love and respect for others needs to be promoted around the world yes. in every mosque, temple, synagogue, and church. Only this inclusive ideology of aloha can defeat the exclusive ideology of terrorism. When a society fails to cultivate this love, fails to respect an individual's freedom of choice, such societies inevitably end up in great darkness and suffering. Unfortunately, there are billions of people in the world today who've been forced to live in societies where individual freedom of consciousness and religion do not exist where people who are followers of the so-called wrong religion or of no religion are treated as lesser human beings, discriminated against, oppressed, forced to pay extra taxes, forced from their homes or from their lands, or worse yet, imprisoned, tortured, raped, or killed. 
As we sit here in this beautiful hall on this great campus today, safe in New Jersey, these examples may seem extreme as we have this umbrella of religious freedom protecting us. But we've got to remember also that nowhere, not even here in the United States, are we immune to the poison of religious bigotry. Abraham Lincoln was attacked with accusations that he was not a Christian. When John F. Kennedy ran for president, his political opponents tried to foment religious bigotry against his Catholicism. When Barack Obama ran for president in 2007, people accused him of being a Muslim as though somehow that would disqualify him from being president. When I first ran for Congress, my Republican opponent stated in a CNN interview that I shouldn't be allowed to serve in Congress because my Hindu religion, quote, what? doesn't align with the constitutional foundation of the U.S. government. Just last year, my Republican opponent stated that, quote, a vote for Tulsi is a vote for the devil oh my God. because of my Hindu faith. The message in each of these situations was simple. You will be punished politically for being of the wrong religion. Exactly. Yeah. There's nothing more so un-American than this. The only way to defeat this dark cloud of religious bigotry and hatred is when we stand together in the light of love. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only love, light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So we must stand with people of all religions who are committed to pluralism and individual free choice. People like Mahmoud al-Asali, who was assassinated for courageously speaking out against ISIS, brutal treatment of Christians in Mosul. Kuram Zaki, a prominent Pakistani journalist and human rights activist who was assassinated because he was one of many Muslims courageously advocating for a pluralistic, tolerant, secular Pakistan. Kenyan Muslims who shielded Christians from attack by terrorists. Jewish and Christian leaders in Victoria, Texas, who opened their synagogues and churches to the Muslim community whose mosque had burned down. There are countless examples of love and courage by individuals and communities who embrace and live by these true spiritual principles of peace, love, some mercy, and tolerance. These are people who are building coalitions, building bridges between communities made up of Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, atheists, secularists, and others who are risking their lives as they bravely cry out for a peaceful, pluralistic society built on the bedrock of religious freedom. So the challenge for each and every one of us here is will we elevate and empower these champions of peace and a pluralistic society? Will we do what is necessary to defeat the destructive, exclusivist ideology with one of love, aloha, and inclusiveness? Or will we stand by, shake our heads, and do nothing? We must act for the sake of our families, our communities, our country, and all of humanity, we must stand with these brave souls, these warriors for peace. Let us stand proudly as Americans, as defenders of our Constitution, as defenders of freedom, as defenders of peace, and as beacons of love. Let us be brave and forceful in standing up for each other's rights to live and worship freely. And let us not be afraid to say that whoever threatens that right for any one of us yeah. will have so to face true. all of us together.
Let us be inspired by the vision put forward by our nation's founders and challenge those who are fomenting religious bigotry to do the same. Rather than pour fuel on the fire of darkness, divisiveness, and hatred, let us bring the light found in the Aloha spirit to our lives, our country, and the world. Let us be inspired as we join hands, working toward the day when everyone, whether they be Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, Jew, Muslim, or atheist, or others, can live in peace and freedom from fear. Let us confront hatred with love. Confront bigotry with aloha. Confront fear with courage. Let us truly live aloha in our actions, in our words, She's amazing. and in our hearts. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. Aloha. She is an amazing speaker. Yeah. I think. She so reminds me of like said guru. Um, the way she talks about peace and unity and love and how we all need to help each other right mm -hmm. and you know we can't be all the peaceful quiet majority right yeah because of those are the ones that you know the ones that are the the not peaceful is the ones that get stuff going so the peaceful majority needs to speak out against the violence against religion, against mm -hmm. being different. Um, you know, she spoke about people um, treating her different, running for president. Like, I listen to her speak right now, and I almost want to cry that she got out of the election. Yeah. Because she is such an honor for the country and for people, and you don't get that in presidential candidates. She knows her stuff. And, um, but she cares. So. So my favorite part or quote of this was, hate can only drive more hate and only love can come through. Only love can break that hate. Right. And darkness only brings more darkness and only light can break that darkness. Yeah. Yeah, I love that quote. She said yeah. it was for Martin Luther King. Um, just... And we did it in the Diwali one, you know, yeah. like, just amazing, her teachings, and, you know, if everybody, you know, stands behind everybody else, everyone should have the, the freedom to believe in God, not believe in God, you know, believe in this God, or that God, or many gods. But you have to stand up for people, otherwise there will be no one left to stand up for you, like that poem. Yeah. So if somebody is saying, you know, you are different or you can't do something because you're a Hindu or you can't do something because you're a Christian or you can't do something because you're Muslim, somebody gets up and says, you know, no, she can do, Anjali can do anything, right? You know, you need people to say that to back you. Yeah. Because if you don't stand up for them. They won't stand up for you. And there will be nobody left to stand up for you, you know? Um... Yeah, this is just, you know, she is an amazing speaker. Yeah. I wish and pray that she could have kept going in the presidential race. Um, you know, she was running as a Democrat and Trump is a Republican. Um, and she has criticized him, but he really likes her um, and what she stands for. Because she is one of, I feel like, the few Democrats that stand for the country as first and mm -hmm. she said that in her speech, country, yeah. and then your faiths and your religion. Um, we've always on this channel said it's something that is kind of personal and your own, you know, you should let everybody believe how they want to believe their religion. Yeah. Um, something you more keep in your home. But yeah, we need to stand up for each other. And, um, and that goes for everybody, you know. We did um, a few other, you know, Bridget forget her last name she talked about the peaceful muslim majority that they are the, the majority. majority needs to stand up right and and she did talk about this you know um getting the ideology behind it we need to change the ideology because you know you you kill one person that's from isis but if they've trained 10 other people to believe what they believe then 
it, the ideology is still there. Yeah. So we need a lot of peace and love and um, standing up for the peaceful majority. We need to stand up for that and fight for that for everybody. And maybe with enough love and hope and sharing the message and uh, you guys sharing the message, yeah. we will get this peaceful message out there and hopefully, you know, we can get rid of some of the hatred and, you know, the darkness yes. will go away. So I hope you guys like this. And don't forget to click that subscribe button down below. And join our wonderful family and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.